Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today is a video on ratio, proportion, unit price, and scientific notation. This is lesson two, part two. There's a first part to this video, and there's a whole playlist of all these lessons. These things are designed to help you be successful in any math exam, any standardized math test. Um, what you wanna do is have a paper and pencil out in front of you, take some notes. When I get to the problems, pause the video with the problem on the board, you do the problem, unpause the video, and then watch how I do it. The way to get good at standardized math tests is really to do a lot of practice problems. So the more that you practice, the better you'll perform on these exams. So to start with, a ratio is an order of values, two or more quantities. Ratio of A to B is 1A over B, where B cannot be equal to zero. It can be written as A colon B, A to B or A to B that way. So if A is equal to eight and B is equal to six, I could write that A to B, eight to six, eight to six. I could reduce that ratio. Two will go into here four times. Two will go into here three times and it'll give me four thirds. Here's another example of X is equal to 72. Y is 48. I could say X is to Y as 72 is to 48. In fractional form, 72 over 48. I'm looking for values that go into both of these numbers. 72 is divisible by 24 to get 3. 48 is divisible by 24 to get 2. So I could reduce this ratio to 3 to 2, or I could reduce that fraction to 3 to 2. All right, I'll cover up these answers here. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you could do these, and then I'll go over them. So read the sentence and then answer the four questions. You can see on these kind of standardized math test problems, a lot of it is really just reading the problem and decoding the words. All right, if you've already done them, I have 16 apples, 20 oranges, 12 pomegranates. Find the ratio of apples to oranges, 16 to oranges, 20. Um, I could reduce that to eight over 10 or four over five. I could write it like that, or I could write it as four is to five that way. Oranges to pomegranates, oranges. I got 20 oranges and I have 12 pomegranates. Uh, this is divisible by four, as is this. So four goes into 25 times, and four goes into 12 three times, so I'm five to three. Apples to oranges to pomegranates. So apples is 16 to oranges 20, to pomegranates 12. All of those three numbers are divisible by four. Four will go in here four times. Four goes into here five times. Four goes into here three times, so four to five to three. Apples to all fruit, well apples are 16. All of the fruit will be 16, plus 20, 36, plus 12, 48. And then I can see that's divisible by eight. It's also divisible by 16. Eight will go in here twice. Eight will go in here six times. And then I can reduce again. Two will go in here one time. Two will go in here three times. So that reduces to one third. I could write it as one third. I didn't actually see that uh, 16 went into 48 right away. So I reduced once and then I reduced again, which is another good way to do it. Okay, here's another example. The ratio of girls to boys in a swimming club is three to four. There were 42 total kids. How many boys and girls were there in the club? So the total number of the ratio is seven. There's a total of 42 kids divided by that seven is six. So the number of boys is three times six, 18, and girls is four times six, 24. The check is this right here, has to sum the 42, which it does. Not only that, it has to be a ratio of three to four. So um, six goes in here three times, six goes in here four times. So it gives me that three to four ratio. Okay, I'll cover this up right here best I can. Jay and Dan share a reward of $140 in a ratio of two to five. How much do each of them get? So I could do the total sum of two and five together is gonna be seven, all right? I'm gonna do 140, the total amount, divided by the total sum of the ratio, seven, to get 20. 
I'm going to take that $20 and multiply it by 2 to get $40. I'm going to take that 20 and multiply it by 5 to get $100. Let's see if this even makes sense. The first check is that the sum has to be 140. Those two things do sum 140, and it has to be a ratio of 2 to 5. So um, let's see. 4 will go into here 10 times, so I could reduce this to 10. 4 will go into here 25 times. And it's not working very well today. 5 will go into here twice. 5 will go into there 5 times to give me that ratio of 2 to 5, which I wanted. All right, let's start looking at unit values or unit rates. The unit value or unit rate is a value of one quantity related to one unit of another quantity, just like we've been talking about ratio one to the other for the two quantities A and B. The unit value or unit rate K is equal to B over A per unit of A. And then K just means it's a constant, it's a constant number. So then you have the formula B value of the first thing to the A value of the first thing is going to be equal to the B value of the second thing over the A value of the second thing. So that's where I started. One ratio equal to another ratio is called a proportion. Um, so if you have part of one whole, it's going to be equal to part of another whole. Let's take. Okay, so go ahead and see if you figure this out first without looking at it, and then watch how we go over it. So at a store, potato chips cost $19 for five bags. What is the price of eight bags at the same unit price? So I got five is to 19. So I have $19 and five bags. I want to know how many dollars for eight bags. So it's going to be equal ratios because they're the same unit price. So I got 19 divided by five has to be equal to what? I don't know. So I call it X over eight. Once I do that, I can cross multiply. Five times X is five X. 8 times 19 is 152. Getting x by itself, I divide both sides by 5, and I get x is equal to 3040. So the answer to this is $30.40. Let's see if that even kind of makes sense. 8 isn't quite twice as much, and 30 isn't quite twice as much either. So it's in the ballpark, so it does kind of make sense. So again, one ratio equal to another ratio is called a proportion. I could solve that by cross multiplying, meaning top left times bottom right is equal to top right times bottom left. Okay, why don't you do this problem first? Don't look at the answer, and then we'll do it together. Okay, unpause the video. Sam bought 12 boxes of cookies for $48. So I got $48 for 12 boxes. So I got dollars on top, boxes on the bottom. What was the cost? So I don't know what this is, but it's the dollar cost of 18 boxes. I could reduce first and then cross multiply, um, which would probably be a little bit easier. 4 will go into 48 12 times. 4 will go into 12 3 times. I could reduce again by 3. 3 goes into here 4 times. 3 goes into here once. All right, so 48 over 12 reduces to 4 over 1. Now I'm going to cross multiply. 18 times 4, 36, 72. 72 is going to be equal to 1x, where x is equal to 72, and x is in dollars. So let's see if that makes sense. 12 boxes cost 48. 18 boxes is 1 and a half times the amount. So 1 and a half times 48 should be 72, and it is. So, all right, let's start taking a look at scientific notation now. Scientific notation is a number between 1 and 10 times 10 to a certain power. So an example, this is my number right here. It's between 1 and 10 times 10 to the 6. And what that means is I got that 3.2 times 10 to the 6. That means move the decimal place over 6 times. So I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's my decimal place. Decimal place when I'm done. So rather than have to say, what is this? Rather than say 32 million, you say 3.2 times 10 to the 6. Here's another example. It's a really teeny number. Um, so I'm still using scientific notation. It's still between 1 and 10. But this is a negative exponent. So I have 4.6. Move it over 6 places to the left. So I go over 1, 2, 
three, four, five, six. Here's my decimal place. So this is point zero 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 four six. So rather than have to say all those zeros, I write in scientific notation like that rather than write all that out. Here's an example. Express this number right here in scientific notation. The number of rounding digits is a big issue, but we'll just keep the first three digits. So this is going to be equal to 8.27. So that's the number between 0 and 10. And then I went over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's 8.27 times 10 to the 6. The power of 10 is 6 because you moved it over those six places right there. All right, here's another example. Express this really small number in scientific notation. So we're going to have to go over 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to be over 4. It's making it bigger, so it's going to be a negative 4. If we're rounding to the tenths place, it's going to be 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 4. Again, so here's the decimal. I'm moving the decimal over 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's where that negative 4 right there comes from. All right, here's another example. Write this out in standard form. That means take it from scientific notation and put it in a normal form. So I got 7.3 times 10 to the third. I go over 1, 2, 3, and it gives me, right here's my decimal, 7,300. Express 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. Do that before you read the correction, and then uh, watch how I do it. I got 6.8. I know that negative is going to make it smaller. It's going to move the decimal that way. One, two, three, four. There's my new decimal, 0 0.00068, because um, I moved the decimal place over four units to the left. All right, here's some problems right here. Go ahead and pause the video and do these problems. Um, before I do them, and then let's see how I do them. All right, so the first two we're turning into scientific notation. The bottom two we're taking from scientific notation and making them into standard form. So what I want to do here is it's going to be 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So times 10 to the 7th if we're rounding to the 10th place. Right here, I go 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be 4.7 times 10 to a negative 3. Right here, I got 5.5 times 10 to the 9th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I don't even know how much this is. Let's see if we can figure it out. Here's 3, another 3. So 500 million, 500, 5 billion, 500 million, right there. Missed that comma right there. And then this one right here, 9.2, we're going to start at 9.2 and go over 5 in that direction. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to get 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.00092. All right, so that was lesson two, part two. Whenever ratio, one ratio equal to another ratio is a proportion. You could solve that by cross multiplying to find your unknown. Uh, whenever unit price and also scientific notation, how to put numbers in a scientific notation or how to put them in standard form from scientific notation. New to the channel, think about subscribing. I do have these cool uh, sweatshirts right here to celebrate hard work you're doing to do well on your standardized exam. Um, all right, well, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching.